sessions. I mean, in Dr. Professor, I mean, Professor Tanuja's session was also so informative. And uh, so I'm looking forward to the next session, definitely. Fantastic. And thank you so much. Lily, I can see her. She's already there. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, you are. Hello, uh, Dr. Ashima. Hello, Sukriti. Hi, how are you? Good to meet um, you. I've been in and out of some sessions and um, I've had a wonderful day so far. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Mini, and uh, welcome to Women's Health Day. So, Pink Thoughts and Prana Integrative Medicine Institute is hosting Women's Health Day. And to, we are focusing on holistic health of women, you know, with a theme of new new year and new you and this is the first and one of a kind even focusing so only so, you know solely on women's health so Pink thoughts as you would be aware is a multi-platform media company that reaches 2.5 million people on a monthly basis and prana is india's first integrative medicine institute which brings over 40 allopathic and alternative medicine experts uh, together serving more than 10,000 clients in delhi and cr I would love to now introduce uh, our speaker today, Mini Shastri, and uh, welcome, Mini. Uh, Mini Shastri is the founder of Om Yogshala Delhi with a teaching experience of two decades and is also a wellness consultant and columnist with the Hindustan Times. She's the wellness consultant for Paro, Gudarth, New Delhi, and is currently designing yoga wellness offerings there. And uh, she has been... Uh, uh, practicing yoga and meditation and has been a great champion for how it affects, you know, it's so beneficial for health, uh, reducing stress. And uh, I'm so looking forward to discussing all this uh, with uh, you, Mini, today. So let me begin uh, with a very simple uh, question. What is an essential good mix of morning practices according to yoga and Ayurveda? even when you are short on time. Yes, so uh, hello, uh, Sukriti and uh, Dr. Ashima. I love the suggestions you gave in the emotional and mental health in the session prior to this. And um, I love the way you said, bring mindfulness to what you do. And that's really the start of taking care of yourself. And, and really, um, Yoga and Ayurveda have such a big tool bag of so many things for so many personalities. You can have a little cheat sheet and do just a few rituals or little habits which can stay with you and till you're ready to adapt and adopt a new one. Sometimes there are so many suggestions that ye bhi karo, wo bhi karo, tongue cleaning bhi karo, dal neti bhi karo. There are so many suggestions that there is a little bit of a decision fatigue in the mornings. And because of this decision fatigue, we tend to be overwhelmed. Ki, are, do we have to wake up uh, pre-Brahma Murat to be able to fit everything in? No, let's, let's keep our self-care simple. Let's not complicate our self-care. And Dhinacharya really is a suitable conduct. Suitable conduct to fit around your time, around your body type, around your personality. If you're, you're, if you're a young mother, if you have to be at work at nine, you know, there are weekends, there are other days where you can do longer practices. There are daily practices which are shorter. There are practices that you can do which are not very time consuming. So my suggestion before I discuss a list that that I personally uh, have over the years adapted into my routine. Uh, Dr. Ashima is, okay. Dr. Ashima is there, yes. There, just, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm there. Just that I couldn't see my screen, so I thought for a yeah. moment that I, <laughs> I was off. And so, uh, the, the idea is to start with simple one or two routines, get adjusted to it, get comfortable with it, invite it with joy, start to bring it into your mornings before you add a new one and then add a new one. And then you see how it works for you. Uh, what needs more preparation? What needs lesser preparation? 
And my teacher used to say that if you have to do your asana in the morning, to do your pranayam in the morning, you have to do your dinacharya in the morning, plan a night before, plan in your head, what is it that you want to do? Plan, plan your five asanas that you want to do in the morning. And it really starts from the night before. Your morning starts from the night before. And so, so an, essential, an essential routine in the mornings. Why mornings? Well, if I were to, uh, the way prayers are made is, prayers are three hour blocks of eight. And the first prayer in the morning is hugely transformative. Just like in nature, there is uh, such a huge transformation from dusk, to, uh, from darkness to light, birds chirping, so the sun coming out. There's such a stirring up of, of, of nature. Similarly, that entire transitional and stirring is going on within us. And Ayurveda believes, uh, uh, recommends that it is the opposite quality that decreases and that balances. Like increases like. So in a time of transition, mobility, movement, apana vayu, all the, you know, your forces of elimination are, uh, your that this time lends itself to forces of elimination. When there's so much movement, you practice the three S's, which is solitude, stillness, and silence. So which is why mornings, because of its transitional quality, you balance with the opposite, with the antidote, which is stillness, which is quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and many times we resist what we most need. And, uh, you know, we wake up in the morning and there's phones to be looked at and there's things to be done and there's a list of things and we have to run to some place and children have to be tended to. But it's just um, a habit of sitting down, even if it's five minutes and just incorporating a simple sitting down routine of five minutes. And you're just, so right. Yeah, you're so right, Minnie, because, you know, we were talking about how women do not take out that kind of time for themselves. And as you say so beautifully, it is so important to even take out five minutes uh, to do all this. And uh, yeah, please go on. Yeah, so, um, so I really, I, I, my mornings are, um, ideally, I like to watch uh, the sunrise because the sun in the morning is really masters and manages the most the, uh, how should I say, the king of hormone, which is your melatonin. And mm -hmm. being in England, I mean, I'm speaking to a doctor, so I better have my facts right. But um, so, you know, the sun is the time in the morning and I always look at the sun and I also bow my head because I want to, again, you know, Ayurvedically and yogically, you want to like uh, stimulate this area where, which really decides the time your melatonin will kick in in the night. So it's your mornings that ironically decides your sleep. Uh, and we know that. And how does it do that? To me, to me, it's the rising sun. So I like to wake up around the time. The recommended time in Ayurveda and yoga is to wake up in the same hour as the sunrise in your country right. and around that time. Right. And so the morning lends, is, lends itself to very transformative habits. And whenever you have, when you feel like you have a stubborn habit, um, you know, you tend to, uh, you tend to be anxious, or you tend to be too rushed, or you tend to be lazy or tired or feeling fatigue and all of those things. Morning is a time of transformation and shifting. So it's a really important and a potent window of time in the mornings. And uh, which is why I, I have four or five practices, which are settling, which are grounding, which is what a structure does. Right. Um, and, and a structure to that would be waking up, gazing at the sun, of course, uh, a few movements to get the lymph moving because your, your lymph needs a little muscular movement. Mm -hmm. Just a few diaphragmatic breaths because again, the lymph doesn't, lymph is something that wants to uh, because it's been stubborn and stagnant all night and it needs to move. It, me, it needs to eliminate and it needs to come out of your body. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I suggest just a few stretches, few side stretches, a uh, few forward folds. I always do that in the morning, even if it's five minutes and you don't have to be in your yoga gear or your tennis shoes or anything like that. So it's, this practice can go with you whenever, wherever you go. And then I start with, I always, um, I always suggest you, you um, try, at least you, um, you know, uh, invest in a good silver um, tongue scraper. Okay because tongue scraping is another 
start in the morning for toxins to come out of your body and um, even Ayurveda as well as Hatha Yoga says the first thing to do is uh, eliminate toxins because you want to go into any um, self-care practices the first thing you should be doing is eliminating toxins so you want to be um, doing all of the things which lends itself and and the mornings are time when the body wants to detoxify automatically mm -hmm. so you help that help that process yeah. by uh, a uh, tongue scraping um, taking care of your indriyas your senses because it's with the five senses that you experience um, life and it's with your five uh, organs of action that you uh, interact with life so taking care of your organs of action taking care care of your organs of uh, perception your five senses I dedicate the mornings and for me it transformed my life to take care of my eyes my nose my ears my skin my tongue and I started with just Jalneti and Nasyam that's it that's mm -hmm. all I started with. then I introduced tongue scraping and then I introduced Karnapurna just lubricating the ears with uh, with uh, uh, sesame oil, uh, I started then with putting rose water in my eyes. Um, I also now what I do is I have a trifla decoction. I just spray my eyes with rose water and trifla decoction. Uh, we can just start with splashing eyes with cool water. Just looking at the sun in the morning is taking care of the senses of the eyes because your senses you see are the interface to your mind. Absolutely, the outer world. By and as we age, we naturally uh, the senses deteriorate as we age. That's part of natural aging process, mm -hmm. and our perceptions and I start to somehow not be so accurate as we age. That's part of aging as well. So to to arrest that deterioration, um, it's it's considered uh, there's a whole science in Ayurveda to take care of your indriyas. Yes. So, so you can pick one. Pick one that um, pick one that suits you pick one that uh, that that is not time consuming and then add another one and then add another one so in my bathroom counter i have my um, my yeah, my my oils my jalneti pot my uh, salt a uh, water heater i have everything there in a tray and depending on how much time i have i do either or you don't have to do jalneti every day you don't have to do nasyam every day. But what I do not try, I compromise on is sitting down in silence in the morning. I was a very asana and, and, and exercise oriented person. And I realized what my body most needed was silence. Mm -hmm. It's only through building this vastness of silence within you and really feeling the, the revitalizing and, and joy of silence that you can start to distance yourself between reaction and observation and that yeah. was the start of being mindful that was the start of being mindful of what served me and what did not serve me right. it was my energy level that day after having eaten something the night before whether it was uh, an energy of a person whether I overexerted or underexerted whatever it was it gave me that homeostasis that baseline for me to judge and see where I am and they started with very small simple practices so yeah. those are your so so that's your taking care of your indriyas your five sense organs if you'd like to know a little bit yeah. more in fact that brings me to another important aspect because what you are sharing with us is all about habits having certain habits which we go on practicing for day in day out and you know for years I think that establishes and it also shows us the results of what we are doing, be it anything, be it yoga, meditation, mindfulness, uh, habits of self-care. So we are essentially what we are due to our habits in long term or short term. How can yoga help us understand habits and whether good or bad and help overcome the ones that are not necessarily so good for us? So how do we do that? Can yoga help us? Our lifestyle is nothing but a, a long-term pattern made up of our daily habits, and which is what we call samskaras. Mm -hmm. the, the biochemistry of habits is quite interesting. Our brain uh, triggers a reward for a habit. You know, it's called dopamine. And yeah. when we 
it's a good habit or a bad habit, the brain gives a sense of reward to either. So mm-hmm. that's why it's very, very hard to break out of a bad habit. Yeah. How do you break out of a bad habit? By adding something more potent, by adding something more powerful than the habit that you're leaving. Um, so the, so, and of course it comes with time and practice. And the thing about habits is it makes such deep grooves and it becomes such a part of our life that we don't realize it, that um, it's, it's, you know, it's overtaken our life and our, and our, and our thinking. Absolutely. And it's very tough to actually, you know, because you can, it's very difficult to unlearn something that you've learned and practice. And like I would say, you're, you're not being mindful. You just go on repeating yeah, exactly. those things again and again over the years and they become your habits, which are not even productive yeah, for you. you know, as we end up living in autopilot, you know, yeah. we live, we live uh, mechanically and uh, we don't realize that's, that habits, that starts to kick in. For example, it's eating, um, you know, a lifestyle habit, which is eating excessively or eating for comfort or, um, or uh, being addicted to our screens. Yes. Uh, you know, these are habits that get rewarded as um, a brain triggers a reward action to it. So it's coming out of these habits by introducing different habits, uh, uh, more like a lifestyle or a ritual. And, uh, and which is why when we start to do things like pranayam, body scanning, yoga nidra, uh, meditation, asana, where you're really holding the asana using your breath. Mm-hmm. And when you are watching the breath all the way to the end of the in-breath, all the way to the end of the out-breath, when you're watching, you start to become a little bit more mindful of your own energy. Right. And the, it's a very small, subtle shift that happens with time. It's not a silver bullet. It doesn't happen overnight. But there has to be that trust and faith that what you're really doing is every day, incrementally, little by little, adding potent habits, which are, which are somewhere making, giving us a baseline, giving us a homeostasis, giving us a balance. So I start my morning with, even if it's five minutes of pranayam, five minutes of japa meditation, five minutes of settling, feeling my weight of my body, feeling the elements that we are, you know, we are made of. Mm-hmm sensing the earth element, sensing the spaciousness. I, I do all of these body scanning to give me a sense of um, here and now being mindful. And that gives me a habit, spills into the rest of the day with everything we do. Yeah. Whether it's our choice of food, whether it's something that didn't suit us, that didn't agree with us. And, uh, and that's how people over time, when they're a little more connected to themselves and to their inner intelligence. Absolutely. Um, and what suits me may not suit you. What may suit. So there's no one package in yoga, pranayam, um, Ayurveda for that, for everybody. It, 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 it can't be one, one size fits all. So yeah. we have to start these tiny little practices and then begin to see what suits us. Then, then we come out of fads. We're not. We're less. We we we're less confused. We start with simpler things like eating early or eating what suited us, what did not suit us. Get our movement in, um, feeling that craving for better habits. So you start to substitute, and as the older habits start to leave us, a more powerful, a more um, well, a more a habit that serves us starts to. Uh, come into our lives and we have to constantly try we have to constantly persevere and and to make it simple and to make it adaptable for us we have to see we have to pick from the tool bag because yoga and ayurveda gives us many roadmaps pick one roadmap stick to it see it through adapt it into your life fully uh, let the body and the mind assimilate its effect and then introduce a new one. This is so vital, Mini, what you just said that, uh, you know, to stick to one thing that you go and do it for a you know, prolonged uh, period of time. Because I find a lot of people being so restless to and so eager to see the results immediately. 
and uh, yoga as we all know and believe that it's a it's it's not something that will show results overnight it's a way of life it's a way you know it, it's just a, a way of thinking of living and all these things are are components of it which over a period of time if sustained start showing amazing results so it's a very important thing that you have brought in that one has to stick and believe in what one they are doing what they are doing and is that to to be in a state of imbalance is natural for us you know mm-hmm. yeah. we are in a state of imbalance because yeah. the 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 uh, the qualities of the day changes from morning to night and afternoon the quality of the seasons change and we can't always change with it so it's very natural for us to be in some sort of imbalance or the other but if this imbalance which we call vikriti is at a superficial level we can still fix it we can still fix all of these little little niggling sit problems and situations like we tired yeah. one morning or not having slept one night or feeling heavy in the belly or not having digested but if the toxicity builds up and our agni douses that's when deeper problem comes in and that's when when they get, go, go into your dhatus and um and and that's when um and that's when bigger conditions start and we want we want to stop and arrest it at that stage mm-hmm. so uh, so we just have to bring be a little mindful of the qualities of the morning qualities of the evening what suits us bring in a little self abhyangam start to massage your skin new skin as an organ use your senses as a, sorry use the organ of the skin as your tool yeah. use your senses as a tool use your physical energy your physical body as a tool treat it like a vehicle that you want to constantly um lubricate nourish take care of and and the and the body is very very intelligent and it's very very sophisticated yeah. mm. so so we want to be also intelligent and sophisticated with the way we deal with it so sometimes too much is not better you know over exercising is not better being being also too regimented with our structure of dinner charya is also you know a, a, a little uh, how should i say restrictive uh, you have to catch a flight in the morning to catch a train in the morning and you have time to do just one little practice but do it do it with love invite it lovingly you have 5 minutes of pranayam you don't want to just sit there uh have, have physical tension in the body and say and your mind is all over the place you need to put your mind in a box give it something to do give it a hook and that hook has to be something uplifting if you're a, if you're a spiritual person let it be something that's uplifting for if if for you it's more physiological like breath then let it be your breath if it's just scanning your body let it be that i started with something simple like listening to birds i would keep a window open and the birds would sit in the tree and i found it extremely hard to sit down and med- meditate till i had something powerful to fix i had a situation which i wanted to fix i would sit down and meditate and i'd say now what do i do where do i go how do i fix my mind i know my health is not okay but if you just do a little thing every day for example uh i i i just came back yesterday uh and we took a flight and uh, two hour drive before the flight then there was the packing and then there was the early morning forest drive so imagine the movement and the mobility starting from 6 in the morning then packing for the kids then sitting in the car then in the airport then taking a flight and always when you are so um how should i say when there is excessive movement excessive thinking ex- excessive thoughts excessive anything excessive exercise you have to counter it with something settling and i all i did last night was warm some oil and uh, and and i did a self uh, abhyangam i did a just a you know for ladies let me tell you what is self abhyangam for ladies it's left side first for men it's right side first it's using the skin literally as a covert as an armor and 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 uh, and all of your organs and the ends of your nerves are maximum on your skin so your skin is actually con- connected to all of your organs and um and it, it settles your vata it, it counters the sense of over movement and it's also very important for women at menopausal years at uh, at any juncture of their life where there's a big shift 
uh, from one stage of their life to the other in their in you know in their late forties or mid forties. So um, you know something simple like I just used my skin as a tool and I slept like a baby and I'm so refreshed in the morning. Then a lot of people are not respecting um, the importance of cleansing at night. The body wants to automatically cleanse its liver and there is a cycle in our life which is in our cycle in the night which is um, which is the pitta cycle at night after 10 o'clock where the body has to f- cleanse itself you don't want to be eating at that time you don't want to be wa- watching anything um, disturbing uh, at that time you want to give your body an inner atmosphere to cleanse, to, yes. to, to fix, to balance itself and not sleeping at the time of sleep, not exercising at the time of exercise, not eating when it's pitta time. Uh, you know, it's things like that, that, that you need to start to cultivate, to move with the rhythms and the circadian rhythms of the day. Yes. In um, fact, you know, sleep is an important aspect of your health and well-being. We all know that. Yes. But, but how does yoga, Ayurveda help us with good quality sleep because people do say that you know they slept for seven hours eight hours but those are not restorative sleep um, you know that they get and they feel so tired and exhausted in the morning so how does yoga or say in ayurveda does it have anything to you know do you have anything to share which would help people get good sleep yes so um the the my the brain the pineal gland doesn't start to produce melan- melatonin because the blue light from your phone or your tv or your netflix mimics the sunlight it has the same waves the uh, same photo waves and you want the melatonin to start in fact melatonin is anti aging melatonin is really governs it's right really the king of hormones and people don't respect that time when they need to start dimming the lights, lowering the lights, lowering the stimulus. And what I do is, when you, if you don't have time to do a full body abhyangam at night, especially in the winter, all, I, all you need to do is, Dr. Vasant Lad also said, you use your, the sole of your foot, your foot abhyangam, your pada abhyangam is really um, the most, one of the most settling tools to help you get good quality sleep. And again, not eating after the sun sets. So say the sun sets by 6.37 or even earlier, not eating heavy grains after that. Yeah. You need, you, know, you need to give your body three or four hours to sleep with something heavy in your stomach. You will never have a restful sleep. You may sleep out of exhaustion, but you'll never have a rest, restful sleep. And then many people are exhausted in their bodies, but too awake in their minds. So then, and again, that, that won't lend itself to good quality sleep. And uh, so these are, uh, you know. Yeah. But this is, you know, this was so meaningful, such a meaningful conversation with you, Minnie. And I wish I could just go on. And there's so much to talk about, and especially in this domain of holistic health, uh, the role of yoga and uh, Ayurveda and how, uh, you spoke about grounding, about nurture, uh, nurturing self. These are such vital things to uh, take care, uh, especially now uh, with uh, so much happening around the world. And uh, I'm so, so uh, you know, so it's a big thank you to you from Sipping Thoughts and from Prana. And uh, so thank you to our viewers. We hope you enjoyed this session and will make yoga an integral part of your wellness routine. Please stay tuned to our next speaker, Geetika Gupta, as we continue our session on inner and outer self. Mini, thank you so much for being part of this Women Health Day today. Thanks so much, Mini. Bye-bye. Thank you. Namaskar. (laughs) So do we have... uh, Geetika here? Yes, very much here. Hello, Hello, good evening. So welcome to Women's Health Day. Uh, Sipping Thoughts and Prana Integrative Medicine Institute is hosting Women's Health Day to focus on the holistic health of women with the theme, A New Year, A New You. And this is the first and one of a kind even focusing solely on women's health. Sipping Thoughts is a multi-platform 
media company that reaches uh, 2.5 million women on a monthly basis. And Prana is India's first integrative medicine institute, which brings over 40 allopathic and alternative medicine experts together serving more than 10,000 clients in Delhi and CR. I would like to introduce uh, our speaker, Dr. Geetika now. Um, Dr. Geetika Mittal Gupta is an award-winning cosmetic physician and expertise in unconventional anti-aging therapies. She's the founder and medical director of ISAC, an international skin and anti-aging chain of wellness centers. Dr. Geetika has uh, been honored by many awards including the Work Beauty Awards 2019 as the best skin expert. Welcome, Dr. Geetika. We are looking forward to your talk on five new beauty habits to start in 2021. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ashima. <laughs> thank you, Geetika, to be, uh, you know, taking out time for us. I think all women are really looking forward to what you have to share. There are lots, uh, because 2020 hasn't been so good for the world. Uh, we are welcoming 2021 at least to take care of our health, to nurture and look after ourselves. Please you. go ahead and share your input. You. It's really nice to be back at Sipping Thoughts, first of all. I'm sure a lot of viewers had joined me initially in my first uh, session with Sipping Thoughts, and now we are here to refresh and rewind. And a, a little bit um, about 2020, you know, we said that 2020 wasn't so great. But I slightly disagree because in 2020, I saw a lot of my patients actually take a deeper dive into their skincare, into their fitness, into their health, and they are coming out more knowledgeable. Of course, some of them did ruin their skin by doing lots of excessive DIYs, but uh, more or less, I've been pretty happy with the way um, uh, my patients are turning up. They are more informed and thanks to the uh, media, the social media, Instagram, and panels like Sipping Thoughts, which has keep everyone very well informed. So we are talking about a very interesting topic, which are the five new skincare habits that we can start. And that's a very interesting thing because New Year or a new resolution gives us a very justified way to start something new and stick to it. Although we can start with anything new at any point, but it's just a very good excuse to get started with something very fresh. So for me, number one would be to look at your skincare wardrobe. Now, when we say skincare wardrobe, we have all seen a lot of Netflix series about minimalism, how to arrange your clothes and keep only what's required. But that's something that also goes with skincare. So check your skincare wardrobe that what actually you need and you don't need. So just organize it pretty well. So did you know that in fact, even sunblocks have a shelf life? So have a habit of reading the shelf life or the date of expiry. It's generally mentioned on the crimp of the product or it is also mentioned like POA, the you know a point of opening when you open the product. So read that and then use the product only if it is right. You can check the texture. Sometimes products tend to get... Uh, expired much quickly if they're put out in the direct sunlight heat or if uh, um, they are not uh, they are left open so always check that so arrange your skincare wardrobe throw whatever is expired or you feel that it's smelling funny or the texture has changed just throw that away second of all look at what your skin actually needs we all make resolutions for our body for our goals every year but why not to make a skincare glow? I know a uh, skincare goal for us will always be glowing skin. So to work towards that glowing skin, we have to take baby steps. So choose those skincare products in your skincare wardrobe, which can help you with that. If you have acne, have those acne ointments or uh, medicines as suggested by a dermatologist. If it's pigmentation, be it for the pigmentation that vitamin C or the retinols or anti-aging products. So arrange and keep the products only that are used and beneficial for your skincare goal ultimately. So that was my first major point of arranging your skincare wardrobe. Use what is required, throw what you don't like, throw what is expired or exchange it with your friends, give it away because skincare is something that has a shelf life and someone else can benefit out of it. So that's my first point. And then going to the second and the fourth most, I was li listening to Minnie's session, in fact, and there was there were so many similarities 
which I could draw from her session and what I'm going to say is then never ever underestimate um, the importance of good sleep. We always think that we are on a go. And in 2020, of course, everyone learned how to take it slow, how to sleep well for at least seven to eight hours. A good restful sleep, a beauty sleep is important. So be it the sleeping beauty in you or be it the hardworking mother, you should not compromise on your sleep. Because sleep is the time when your body's organs are rewinding, rejuvenating. And your skin is in fact the largest organ of your body. So whatever stresses you are undergoing inside will show on your skin. So if you're not slept well, if you're stressed, it will show on your skin because this is the largest organ and your face is the thing which is mostly visible outside and which you are more particular about. So your beauty sleep is really important. Make sure you meditate or do whatever you can do by switching off your social devices, by doing your pranayama before sleeping or eating less or doing some heavy activity during the day so that you have a nice stressful sleep. That's very important. Third is, of course, eating. Now, I would say a lot of the viewers here would be like, oh, doc, we know about it. We don't eat uh, bad. But I believe absolutely that what you eat is going to show on your skin. So be it that extra sugar, halwa, or those laddus that you're going to consume in winters, that is going to show on your skin. So there are no shortcuts. So this year, 2021, while we are fitter and healthier, and while we have started reading and understanding more, this is the time you should say bye to sugar. Now, sugar, I see so many patients every day. They said, oh, doc, we have stopped having sugar, but I've started having sugar-free. That's even more harmful. Second of all, I would understand some people would come and say, oh, doc, I've started having jaggery or I've started having dates. Now, everything has a certain gram of sugar inside. So whether you are choosing dates or jaggery, which are definitely healthier than processed white sugar, the quantity has to be matched. You can't have like four to five dates in a day and say you're not having sugar. Ultimately, everything will be processed inside your body and get turned into sugar. So say no to that sugar because that is not only going to cause aging. So sugar in your body turns into glycated hemoglobin, which is further going to not only leading to aging, which causes shortening of your telomeres, but it also leads to acne. It also leads to early signs of wrinkles. So these are some things that you need to be very careful when you're picking your diet. Number four is using the right skincare tools at home. I think I remember talking about this to my friends over here last time as well. And this is the time I'm sure everyone has seen so many tutorials about using skincare tools. And Minnie was talking about using your skin to relax yourself. So using those tools is great. Use them efficiently, clean them properly while you are going to use them. But while you're using them, don't think of them the only solution that will remove something that has happened. Take them as your fitness exercises or like your pranayam you do for your body. So these are the tools that you can help rejuvenate your skin every day. And then it's coming to the trends of the treatments. This year, I feel more and more patients that I'm seeing and more and more studies that we are doing, people are definitely choosing treatments which have uh, actually, which are treating the problem inside. People are not, not hesitating to treat their scars anymore. Initially, I used to see a lot of patients in my clinic who were like, oh, doc, we don't want anyone to know that what we are treating. And I have this scar, but I don't want a laser which has a downtime. But now is the time we treat the problem from the core. Be it your mask, which is hiding the downtime, or be it your knowledge about skin. This is the time to address the issue before you dress it up with acne, uh, with makeup. So these are the things that I feel are the new trends. Be it your education about your skincare, be it using the right tools, or be it choosing the right treatment with your doctor. The idea is to be well-informed and choose wisely. Dr. Gitika has always a lots of questions coming in, and I'm sure Dr. Ashima is also looking at them. The first question, of course, we're in winter, and of mm. course, it's almost the end, but how to take care of dry skin in winters? We all definitely want to know those tips. Sure. So, Sukriti, winters are generally synonymous with dry, itchy skin because all the dry air outside is sucking the moisture from the skin. That is the reason you're Skin in winters need uh, to be taken care of much more. Like how we change our wardrobe, 
our skin care also needs to change in winters so your face wash which was generally more foamy in summers will change to a creamy face wash and in winters the worst habit that i see in my patients is that they wash their face or they take long hot showers so when you take long hot showers all the moisture from your skin gets stripped away so just imagine your skin turning red and you're standing under a hot shower it feels really nice on a winter morning but that is actually eating up all your natural moisture so a quick shower in and out warm water and if you are brave enough then actually use cold water rinse to boost up your blood circulation and it also helps in locking the moisture and quickly post the shower don't rub the towel on your skin dab it dry gently and then you layer your skin care products so for your face wash it with creamy cleanser follow it up with a toner and then a nice serum now the serum can be different depending on your skin type it can be vitamin c it can be hyaluronic acid it can be azelaic acid use few drops of that serum all over your face include your neck because neck is something which is also a part of the face your face doesn't end here and then after the serum is your under eye cream which goes from in to out again very important then the moisturizer followed by the sunblock so this is the routine that we follow for uh, skin care in winters during the daytime <clears throat> at night your uh, night cream can have retinols your night cream can be more uh, uh, dense because at night while you're sleeping your skin actually refreshes and regains and regenerates <clears throat> fantastic some more questions coming in now of course because we are all watching these diys and we have become obsessed with diys home remedies that you would recommend that you know are actually working and that will give us that glowing skin sure sukriti so first i will say what to stay away when you're doing those diys because that's more important to remember what not to do so what you should not be doing when you're doing diys is don't combine your acids on the skin with your diys at home because that can super exfoliate the skin and leave it a more dry itchy and scaly skin so if you're using any acids in the skin like aha's bha's or retinols your diys should not be used be very careful second of all don't use any acids like lemon juice is very very acidic and the moment you put your put it on your face it can make your skin more photosensitive meaning when you go out in the sun your skin can actually burn with uh, uh, due to the sun third don't use products like cinnamon because these are very very strong they can lead to harsh burn and rashes on the face so stay away from these things and use your diys as quickly as possible you cannot put them in a fridge thinking that it will last you for a week use them there and then because that is the uh, way they are supposed to be they don't have any preservatives they can turn bad and don't put on your face what you can't eat so if a yogurt has turned rancid and it's uh, tasting sour and you are not going to eat it don't apply it on your face because your face has to be treated gently some diys for winters that i personally love is definitely the avocado face mask because avocado is full of good fats and it has such antioxidant value it's also very very moisturizing so you can use some mashed avocado and just add a little bit of honey to it now honey is a humifactant which is also an antibiotic in nature so just mix it up and use it as it is you can also add a spoon of curd to it which works as a probiotic and it also protects your skin use it on your face you can also turn it into a hair mask when you're using it for your hair just use avocado and honey you can even add some aloe vera gel to it for your hair it keeps the dandruff away but don't add any lemon juice because as i said it can turn your skin more photosensitive Thank you, Dr. Geetika. I think uh, it would be wonderful if you could give some uh, tips on uh, how young people can take care of their skin care. I mean, uh, we know a skin keeps changing in the twenties and thirties, and of course, forties is another. But uh, any tips for young girls who? Uh, how can they start taking care without using any artificial, uh, you know, substance on their face? So skin care. um for me is more about prevention and maintenance to start with for young girls so even for a child when a child is born it's very important to start to take care of the skin there and then so be it applying the right moisturizer and when you slowly start changing into your teenage using a good sunblock and then taking care of your acne for a young adult say between their late uh, teens and 20s i would say it's very important first of all to understand your skin because that is the time your hormones are going all haywire and you can start having acne 
so if you have acne please don't sit at home and think you will grow out of acne because that acne can lead to more scarring on the face and prevention is more important so see a dermatologist if you have acne but if you have a normal skin type and you just want to start a good skin care regime understand your skin type and switch to a skin care regime which is more specific to your skin type so be it your cleanser followed by a toner and a serum yes even young adults can use a serum because with the digital exposure that we have even the digital exposure leads to blue light damage on the face and we are having very stressed life there is pollution so everyone needs to take care of the skin be it one way or the other so wash your face tone your face apply the serum moisturizer and sunblock yes sunblock is very very important even if you are sitting at home you should be using a sunblock because even from the window the sunlight can penetrate and cause damage on your skin so it's really important to use a sunblock even on a cloudy day so use a sunblock every 2 to 3 hours for young adults who are participating in a lot of sports they should make sure that they, uh, their sunblock is also sweat resistant so that when they are out in the sun and they're sweating the sunblock doesn't get withered away there are physical sunblocks which are much safer for their face so they can always switch to physical sunblocks rather than physical uh, chemical sunscreens but this is a good skin care regime they should follow and do wash your face i see a lot of young adults who don't even wash their face so washing your face is the first and foremost important thing and the second thing is your sunblock these two things you cannot skip and also uh, dull and dry you know a uh, hair because i think people are using so much uh, so many products are there in the market and people keep experimenting and so uh, how important is it to stick do, do we have to stick to one shampoo and one oil or one can circulate and try newer ones and how does one take care of dull and dry hair absolutely i think um, there is hair fall is one thing that i'm seeing quite a lot in my patients and dull and dry hair is generally caused when there is a lot of uh, dry air around and you end up using a lot of chemicals on your hair or you end up doing a lot of blow dries so rule of thumb try to stay away there is a way to dry your hair you know it's a very basic thing but a lot of people don't know about it so when you wash your hair your shampoo is meant for your scalp so your scalp should be healthy it is not meant more for your hair but it's meant for your scalp health and your conditioner is meant more for your strands so your conditioner goes on the strands so after washing your hair towel dry them use a conditioner if your hair are very dull and dry you can also give a nice um, hair spa at home by just mixing some conditioner with olive oil and apply it before shampooing your hair so apply it all over your hair strands leave it on for about 20 minutes and then you go for your shampoo that will further hydrate and lock in the natural moisture in your hair strands that's a very simple thing that you can do so after you have conditioned your hair after shampooing your hair you condition your hair you towel dry your hair use a cotton towel rather than abusing your hair by you know twisting them turning them or hitting them with the towel which i have seen you just need to like wrap them up in a cotton towel and let them dry naturally but because it's winter time and you feel the need to use a hair dryer use a hair dryer at some distance from here don't use it right next to the hair because that will further dry up the hair use it at some distance so that heat is not too much in contact use some heat protective products for your hair which are very well available in the market so that your hair are protected from the heat damage and when you are sitting out in the sun we apply sunblock for our face but our hair also get exposed to the sun which leads to sun damage so wear a cap or wear an umbrella or wear a scarf on your hair to further protect it from the sun damage so these are very simple uh, things that if we start taking care we will see some results in our hair do that diy with the conditioner and the olive oil you can also use rice water which is working very well for my patients who have frizzy hair so just use some um, uh, soaked rice water put it in a spray bottle and you can mix in some aloe vera inside it and use it as a spray on your hair leave it on for about half an hour and wash your hair that will further make your hair frizz free and it will also moisturize your hair thank you so much is there any food which is good which you would say particular foods which a person must have for good skin and hair absolutely great question Ash- dr ashima in fact uh, as i started off saying our skin is actually reflecting the foods that we eat so it's really important for us to look back inside especially our protein intake 
when you start seeing that your hair are breaking in the middle that is generally due to loss of protein my patients would come and give me their history and then they would say oh after, before like 3 4 months back i went on this crash diet and that's why i'm having this hair fall so if you are wanting to indulge in any of those crash diets which i don't suggest but if you are make sure you having your nutritional profile check make sure you having your nutrients in place so foods that you should must have every day of course with covid times going on vitamin c is most important have that amla juice every day have your micronutrients from sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds just a spoonful of them will give you though all the micronutrients you want probiotics which is very important which is in fermented food like uh, curd we all have at home south indian food shorkat these are all very good sources of probiotics which not only keep your gut healthy but also your face and your skin healthy and again protein which is very important for vegetarians you have to have your dals your lentils or eggs or even uh, quinoa is full of protein so make sure you have a balanced out meal throughout the day having too much of carbs or less of carbs is not going to help you a balanced meal throughout is very important and something that i really really want everyone to start feeling that all these power superfoods that we talk about quinoa or moringa these are good but the idea is to sustain them you cannot have it for a week and feel that it will give you some results you have to sustain it for a month or so to start seeing results because they are in very low dose quantity apart from that have your multi nutrients every day like a multi vitamin if uh, you can start having vitamin e also vitamin c at least 1000 mg and vitamin d we talk about 1000 international units every day apart from that collagen is also really nice it's not only good for your joints but also for your skin for your hair for your nails a lot of collagen powders a lot of collagen capsules available in the market but the idea is to see any good results you have to sustain it you have to take it for at least 2 to 3 months to start seeing results great uh, another question that just came to my mind is that uh, you know people are working from home and also there are a lot of uh, women especially i'm talking about women who are working in offices where they are the whole day 7 to 8 hours they spend in air conditioned rooms and they don't get the natural or the fresh air how does that affect the skin and how what can they do because it d- definitely has a drying effect on the skin uh, yeah. and now in winter they have blowers and uh, you know heaters on how can one protect the skin as a like a normal routine what what is it that they should be doing of course and dr ashima apart from that also uh, staying outdoors wearing mask all the time there are a lot of pe- patients coming with mask acne too yes so yes. if you are sitting in a room with say dryers or blow dryers which end up drying up the air more you have to make sure that you hydrate inside out place a humidifier as well if you don't have a humidifier then you can just put a bowl of water next to the blower so that your air outside is more humid in china of course there was a study that women out there actually hang a wet towel next to the dryer so that the air is more humid and it doesn't dry up mm-hmm. using moisturizer is very important but then if you're wearing a mask and you layer your skin with too much moisture it can clog up the pores mm-hmm. so don't wear makeup avoid wearing makeup so that does, your skin can breathe and there is no clogging of pores use a mild moisturizer which forms a barrier between the mask and your skin and your skin can actually breathe in improve the hydration level by also drinking lots of water in winters of course people get very lazy in drinking water because you have to rush to the washroom and you don't want to do that you're very nice and comfortable but you have to drink water so make it interesting by having green tea or any uh, kadhas that you want make it interesting but you must hydrate your body from inside too so putting humidifiers hydrating your skin using a moisturizer these are very very important thing there are also oral supplements available in the market which actually boost up the hyaluronic acid level in your body there is one from gnc available which i have been suggesting my patients so they also can take that which improves the hydration level a good hydrated skin is something that will always look more youthful i always give an example to my patients like uh, if you see a dried apple the skin of a dried apple is all shriveled up it looks very dull there's a this a shiny red apple that's moisturized so just imagine that whenever you are avoiding to have that water or coconut water imagine that and gulp down water and apply that moisturizing levels to your skin i can see sukriti gulping down <laughs> the water right there <laughs> yeah 
Uh, thank really you. Good. Yeah, thank you so much. And in fact, you know, uh, all these questions, I think that there's also another question that's coming to my mind that there are a lot of people who are very sensitive and including me, mm -hmm. I can't use anything because my skin is so sensitive. And uh, you just keep wondering, uh, you know, which cream to use, what to use on your face, because I can't use it, you just get allergies. So uh, what what would somebody do who has a sensitive skin and they can't use artificial creams and moisturizers that you just mentioned? Is there so any way, Ashima, natural way to take care of your skin? So Dr. Ashima, there are special products meant for sensitive skin type, in fact. They are meant to be non-irritant, perfume-free, fragrance-free, because that is important. They're natural things, being, being a doctor, I would say they work, but they have to work in tandem with the science. Because that's very important to see good results, only if they're working hand in hand together. Aloe vera, we all know about it, that it works beautifully. But will it also be a sunblock? Not really. It has SPF of only five. So it can protect you from more sun damage. You can rather use a physical sunblock, which has no irritants inside to protect your skin. So there are ways to use nature, but we cannot just rely on nature. Science also works for our benefit. A good combination of nature and science will always work for us. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think uh, we are, uh, do, do we have more questions? Yeah, there are a few more questions, but I think when we start talking about beauty, the questions never end. <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, but thank you very much, Dr. Gitika, for thank you with us because your advice is always so valuable. Thank you, Sukriti. Thank you, Dr. Ashima. Thanks for inviting me. Thank Wishing you. everyone a very happy new year. Yes, to you too. And it was a wonderful session and you answered so many questions and I'm sure our viewers uh, really got some valuable information here from you. So uh, let's hope, uh, you know, let's just hope 2021 brings in a lot of inner and outer beauty in our lives and we all stay happy, healthy and